I was forcefully pinned down. My legs were spread apart and I felt a sharp cut between my legs. And at this time, I did not even know what they were cutting. I just knew they were cutting something off my private part. And it was shocking for me because that was the least thing to come to my mind. That short violence will happen to me and organized by my own family. Sarian, a Christian, was 11 when her genitals were mutilated. It happened in her homeland of Sierra Leone before she moved here to London where she owns a food store. She was blindfolded at a party and without any sort of anaesthetic, her clitoris was removed with a knife. They just do that because they feel that I need to be part of the, the culture and I need to be totally accepted within my community. It's not in any of the holy books. It's just a um, cultural practice, you know, a bad practice that was abducted. It's just to subject women, you know, it's, 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 um, to so much harm. It's a way of controlling women, especially your sexual urge. And it, it does work, trust me, because once that's been taken away, it really, really destroys your, your sexual appetite and things like that. The exact scale of FGM in Britain is unknown. The government estimates at least 170,000 women and girls have undergone it and 65,000 under 13s are at risk. For many, it's happened in their homelands. Somalia, the Gambia and Sudan rank highly. But reports suggest it's happening here in the UK too, illegally. English health services have newly recorded the equivalent of 100 FGM cases a week since April last year. That's just the ones they know about and the ones they've reported. Dr Brenda Kelly runs a specialist clinic in Oxford for those affected. She says FGM can cause lifelong health problems. If it's a child, obviously they may have pain and bleeding infection, but the majority of women, the patients I see are women in adulthood who have lived through the consequences of it happening, but who also may have difficulty passing urine, um, passing their period blood, um, uh, having sexual relations with their husband or partner. A significant number of women have lasting psychological, psychosexual consequences of FGM, including a significant number, about one in six, having post-traumatic stress disorder or symptoms suggestive of that. Campaigners say elderly women, typically those who perform FGM, are flown into the UK for the black market. Police also suspect young girls are taken to family homelands during the school summer holidays during the so-called cutting season. My dad's plans were to get me married via Skype and get me circumcised before or after, sooner, my marriage before any sexual intercourses with my husband. And the reason why they told me I have to be circumcised was that you're not a good Muslim, you're not representing Islam, you might you smell urine. And then it made me question all sorts of things to myself. Am I not a Muslim? Religious. Zara, who was raised in England, came under huge pressure from her Asian father to have an arranged marriage and FGM. It was almost too much to bear. Yes. There are some days I would just sit there and think, isn't it better if I just not stay or live anymore? You felt suicidal? Yeah. So many women and girls, like Zara, often suffer in silence, both here in the UK and elsewhere. They're terrified of going against their family and their communities. But Zara was eventually saved from her father's plans. She spoke out and the police got involved. A joint FGM and forced marriage protection order was issued, meaning anyone who pressures Zara will go before the courts. Criminal charges were also brought against Zara's father, but she told me she couldn't go through with them. I want to give a message at the same time. I want to have a life too. I don't want to lose my dad. Because he's been there for me throughout my life, being my best friend. Would listen to me with everything. And my, I lost my mom's contact at a very young age. She had some really bad mental problems. So he's the only person I would just run up to and talk to. So I didn't want to lose that. <laughs> Thank you.
Do you think he now understands why you did what you did? Yeah. Do you think he accepts it? Yeah, now he does. So a lot of the times it's usually done by people who love you and it's seen as an act of love. Karin Tazi works for a charity which campaigns to eradicate FGM. I lose my family, I don't want to criminalise my family. So it's really difficult to speak out about yeah. that. She says it's all about educating mothers who've undergone it themselves. A lot of the times it's about changing these women's mindsets, challenging the ways that they think and making sure that this doesn't pass down to the next generation because these women are probably the ones who are going to be having it done to their daughters. And so it's about showing them that this is a form of abuse and it's illegal. I love my life. I think I'm perfect the way I am. Charities also take their education drive to schools in the UK with videos such as this one. So please, don't harm my body. FGM's been illegal in the UK for 30 years. In England and Wales, parents can be charged if they take their children abroad to undergo it. But there's not been a single conviction for FGM. Back in then, I was helpless. I was thinking I would have life, and I was thinking I might end up being a slave to some man. But now I've been taught what I could do and couldn't do, and what I would say could do. <laughs> I feel like I have more power than my said I would say. So it might feel really hard to come out and speak against their family, but at the end, it will be a beautiful, message to them, beautiful life they've been given.